A fast start to the year for corporate takeovers, but will it give stocks a boost? Maybe so. WHJ's Dan Strumpf is here to explain. Thanks for being here, sir. Morning. So, tell us, tell us about the, uh, the, mer the merger boom, the merger yeah. takeover. Well, after a, 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 a long and very quiet period for the mergers and acquisitions market, uh, we're finally seeing a, a big pickup in a big way this year. Um, biggest start to M&A activity for any year, uh, basically on record, uh, well over uh, uh, $600 trillion um, in, in activity so far. So, so, so quite, a big, uh, quite a big lift. Okay, and we're going to look at we're going to look at a graphic here. It's uh, up 18 mm -hmm. percent, uh, down one point. One point. Oh, sorry, the, sorry. This is the uh, the average average um, price of a, an acquired company um, day after the news, which is kind of interesting, right? Up 18% versus down 1.4% normally. The idea here is that when you buy something, um, you, you, you're wrong. Um, the idea is that when you pay a lot of money for something, you've overpaid, it's going to be wrong. They're not seeing it that way this time. Right, right. So typically what happens is that is, is the, is the, the acquiring company is, is really taking a risk in, in buying another company and announcing to buy another company because there's always a chance that the deal falls through. There's a chance that the synergy that they had initially planned on don't don't actually turn up. So and they often don't. They, they often, often don't. They often don't turn up. It's often these opti deals do opti fall through. Optimism um, right. is, I mean, is it, one of the things that management has. This is why they're in management, right. uh, presumably. But I mean, there's there's books out there, including one from my, my to the dean of my business school called Deals from Hell. You have uh, you know cultural issues and people don't like playing well together. Absolutely. Uh, and you, you you often see the company being targeted for an acquisition. That that share the share the shares of that company typically go up and investors love love when they're when a stock that they own is is in play um, but but now you're seeing tremendous pressure uh, on CEOs on corporate boards to do something with all this cash that they've spent this, these, these five years since the financial crisis hoarding up they've just been sitting on these huge cash piles cleaning up their balance sheets and uh, typically rewarding investors with things like buybacks and dividends that but, that, but you see, that's financial engineering, yes. and that really doesn't do anything to your, to your profits. It does a lot to your per share profits. It makes the stock very attractive, but it's not the same as building factories, is it? No. Um, if you do that, and you can either build a factory or you can, I guess, buy a company which owns some factories, and that is sort of what's happening, right? And we're still not quite to the point yet where where companies are feeling comfortable enough to start really investing in new factories, start hiring huge amounts of workers in a big way. But we're, we're sort of ha we're, we're sort of halfway there. Which is, which is, as you said, buying companies, buying factories, buying that, those earnings that, that companies are still a little bit nervous to try to invest in and create themselves. Okay, interesting stuff. Thank you very much. Dan Strumpf of the Wall Street Journal. I suggest everybody checks that out.